Hi everyone, this is my process on how I animate lip sync. It's not the only way to do it, but I find it helps to see the process. I've been trawling the internet for references and looking up how other people animate mouths, and I've made a couple of templates that you can download and use for reference, which I'll leave a link to in the description. Now, animate and lip sync is usually the last thing I do before lining my animation, as I want to get the posing and the performance of the character right first. It's always a good idea to use a guide for where the upper lip will be, as this will help keep the mouth placement consistent so they don't slide all over the place as your character moves. You'll want to have a mouth shape that links with each sound rather than one for every letter in a word. Otherwise, it looks something like this. Hi everyone, this is my process on how I animate lip sync. It's not the only way to do it, but I find it helps to see the process. Not only did that take me a lot longer to do, but it also looks a bit weird. For your animation, you want to find or record some audio and import it into TV Paint. I got my audio from 11 Second Club, which is a challenge for animators held every month. You can win things, get feedback on your work, and practice to some good clips. You can find past winners and clips on the archive page. Here's the test I made earlier. I've used a basic character and a handful of keyframes to demonstrate. No dangerous problems or horrible mishaps in sight? Hmm. No, Tom. Everything appears nominal. Ah, nominal. Good, good. So I guess that means you're not worried about what that rhythmic pounding might be. I make sure to listen to my track a few times first and then write down the key sounds in the notes section of TV Paint. There's three colours and tools to clear, move and delete anything you've written by colour, if you need them, though usually I just choose one and stick with that. The notes section acts like a dope or X sheet to tell you how the track matches with the timeline and is your guide when you start animating the mouth. Putting down the key mouth shapes and making sure that they match the sound takes the longest. It's a lot of scrubbing through the timeline and playing things back to see whether anything looks off, or if there's a bit you've got right, which is always great to see. For longer sounds, you can stretch or reduce the size of the mouth shape. For example, when my character says no. The mouth widens, and when he says good, good, I make the O of the mouth smaller. I'd consider these in-betweens and can be added once you've got the main keys down. If you're unsure about a mouth shape, sounding out the words in a mirror or acting out the scene and recording it can really help. No one has to see it but you, and you can come back to it and play through slowly to see all the frames. Using a reference is not cheating. If you're animating a character that has a lot of lip sync and is going to take ages drawing various mouth shapes over and over again, there is a way to do this quicker. Programs like Toon Boom or Flash have extensions that can save the mouth shapes and allow you to swap between them, speeding up the process. And while I don't think TV Paint has anything like this yet, as it may be something they add in the future, for now I've figured out a workaround. Go to the Custom Panel and select New Custom Panel, and a new box will appear. This is where you will store your mouth shapes as brushes. Draw your mouth shapes on a blank frame or a new project at a reasonable size, minimum 1920 by 1080. If they're too small, they may come out pixelated or blurry if you want them bigger. If you want lines only, draw lines. If you want them coloured, draw the lines and then on a separate layer beneath, add colour. Once you're happy, merge the layers. Next, use the cutting tool to select one of your mouth shapes. I use the freehand tool, which can be found by clicking and holding the cutting tool icon to reveal more options. Next, right click on your new custom panel and save your brush with colours. Do this for all of your mouth shapes. So while the icons might not be the biggest in the panel, you can see a preview of them in the brush preview to the left. When you're animating keyframes for lip sync, you can use these and with a single click, it's done. If you find they're too big, don't delete them. One at a time, reduce the size and save them into a new custom panel, which you can then rename and use straight away. This way you have both the originals and your brushes at the correct size. It's so easy to swap them over for one another and after figuring this out, the time my lip sync takes to do has been cut down by half. You can still hand draw the in-betweens or use the transform tool to stretch or reduce your mouth shapes, but this definitely speeds things up and it will be something I use a lot in the future. So I hope this tutorial has been helpful. Let me know in the comments if there's anything you want me to clear up or explain further. And if you do animate something, let me know. I would love to see what you do. That's all for now. Thank you for watching. I'll be back with another video real soon.